Hello and welcome. I'm Anubhav and welcome to the uh, part 9 of the blog series on OData. Uh, in the previous uh, blog, uh, we have created the OData service um, for the flight model. This was the OData service that we created. Uh, we created uh, the data model and uh, generated this service, uh, which resulted into some uh, runtime artifacts uh, which we'll be discussing uh, and implementing uh, in this video so let's start with uh, understanding what is the gateway odata channel uh, odata channel is the name of a usage type and the programming concept of sap netweaver gateway OData channel for SAP NetWeaver Gateway allows uh, you to provide content for OData consumption. Such an OData service is uh, built from two regular BAP classes, a so-called model provider class and a data provider class. So if we go back to the uh, uh, SAP NetWeaver Gateway Service Builder, we can see these uh, runtime artifacts, the uh, model uh, provider class and the data provider class and then the extension classes for us to make the implementations the data provider class provides the gateway service functionality uh, whereas the model provider class defines the gateway service interface uh, the provider class and the uh, sorry the model provider class and the data provider class are The model provider class and the data provider class are not required to have any direct programmatic uh, communication with each other. They are combined into a gateway service by means of configurations, not coding. If you can look at this uh, diagram, uh, the model provider class uh, has a wrapper, uh, which is a configuration wrapper around it uh, of a technical model object. Similarly, uh, service group is the tech is the configuration uh, wrapper around the data provider class. Uh, the gateway service is created by associating the technical model object with the uh, service group. The service group contains the definition for the internal and, and the external service names. Uh, the external name is uh, something that is seen by the end user. The final configuration step is to create an entry in the service catalog, which we will see once we have uh, done the uh, implementation of the service. So let's just look at the uh, structure of uh, these uh, classes. Uh, there is this model provider class, uh, data provider class, uh, registering uh, or uh, registered model, uh, which is the uh, uh, technical object and the service, uh, registered service uh, uh, configuration wrapper around the uh, data provider class. Let's start by looking at the model uh, provider base class. Uh, this is inherited uh, from the uh, uh, abstract push uh, model provider class. Uh, the important method here is the uh, define method. Uh, then we have the extension class. Uh, again, this is uh, derived from the uh, uh, data uh, model provider class itself. And this is where uh, the uh, code is generated for the data model that we had uh, created look at uh, the attributes for example these uh, flight carrier and flight connections uh, this is are uh, all created by the data model uh, that we created uh, using the service builder now going to the uh, data provider class again uh, there is a super class uh, uh, 
uh, which is again which is inherited from the abstract class and the subclass is the extension class where we will uh, provide our implementation uh, if you look at the methods uh, there will be methods for each of the entity set like for example carrier entity set there is uh, create entity delete entity uh, get entity and get entity set update entity uh, different between get entity and get entity set is that for get entity uh, get entity uh, method is implemented uh, to f uh, as part of the read operation to get a single instance of the uh, entity and get entity set uh, gives you a list of uh, uh, instances of that entity And uh, if you remember from the last video when we generated the uh, uh, service, uh, uh, then these runtime artifacts were created and there was a pop-up uh, which gave us the, uh, suggested the names of these uh, classes based on which the runtimes, uh, runtime artifacts got generated. Next, we will uh, provide the implementation uh, for the data provide extension class. Um, to get our flight uh, data model up and running. Let's now uh, implement the data provider extension class. Uh, so it has uh, all the inherited methods uh, coming from the uh, uh, its super class data provider class uh, what we need to first do is to understand what is what is our backend uh, looking like and uh, even before that uh, what are we trying to do so if I go back to the mockups that I had uh, explained in the sixth part of the blog uh, you could see the list of airlines uh, which would be listed uh, and for each of the airlines you would have um, uh, list of uh, flight corrections available and then you could do a check availability of those uh, of uh, a flight on a given date uh, for a certain class uh, the information from uh, which will come from the uh, flight schedules and then you could also create a new schedule uh, to the uh, existing uh, set of data right uh, on the backend uh, part, what we have is uh, we have uh, a possibility to uh, look at uh, all the uh, flight carriers. Uh, so we have a simple select query on the SCAR table, which uh, returns the ED SCAR data. Um, we have uh, similarly a uh, function module uh, or an RFC uh, where uh, giving the uh, flight carrier i get the uh, connectivity or connection data uh, let's look at the source code again a uh, select query on the spfli table based on the importing parameter which is car id uh, we have the information for the schedules as well uh, which is uh, uh, based on the uh, carrier ID and the flight uh, number and uh, then we have the flight availability uh, uh, RFC which based on the uh, carrier ID uh, and the uh, connection and the flight date and the class in which you would want to see the seats it would uh, fetch the information from S flight and then uh, based on the class that you're looking for, figure out whether there's uh, availability on the seats or not. And then finally, we have a possibility to create a flight trip uh, by providing uh, the following information uh, from the OData service to the backend. Right. I have uh, already uh, created uh, and implemented the uh, service. Uh, so let's just uh, go through what all has been created. So we'll start with uh, 
the carrier set get entity set so if we look at uh, this method it has importing parameters uh, uh, with it uh, key tab uh, and, and, and exporting parameters containing the entity set itself what we do here is uh, we are getting the entire set of uh, uh, carriers and that is why I'm not using the IT key tab here uh, I'm simply calling the uh, backend RFC to get the flight carriers and then um, uh, copying that information to my export parameter and then sending it back so that's the get entity set uh, implementation uh, I also have done an implementation for get entity and here uh, in the IT key tab uh, I'm expecting a carrier ID to be passed uh, which I am reading and then based on that I am uh, calling in an, another RFC which uh, gets me the SCAR based on the carrier ID and then I prepare the result set and then pass it on to the uh, ER entity uh, this is a structure uh, uh, unlike the previous one so as I mentioned earlier the difference between the entity set and entity is that entity will return only one instance whereas the entity set will return multiple similarly for uh, flight connections uh, I've made an implementation where based on the carrier ID which is passed as IT key tab um, I'm calling the backend RFC to get the flight connections and then uh, uh, populating the result set and pretty similar uh, way of doing uh, on the for the get entity the only difference is that in this case I am passing the carrier ID and the connection uh, ID as well because I am expecting only one entry to be uh, returned so this is the uh, uh, pair uh, which gives me the primary key a very simple straightforward implementation uh, just to understand how easy it is to create O data services uh, and similarly for the uh, flight schedules uh, I have created the get entity set here uh, when I'm uh, passing the uh, connection ID uh, and uh, um, uh, carrier ID and based on that I'm getting the flights all the flight schedules I've also implemented the uh, function import uh, to check the availability and here uh, based on action name which is uh, mapped to the um, uh, uh, map to the function import data model uh, I'm checking the various import parameters that I'm expecting uh, so if you look at the import parameters there are four import parameters I'm uh, capturing all of them and then uh, calling my RFC uh, to get the flight uh, uh, to get the seat availability information and passing it on uh, to the uh, OData response and then finally the uh, create entity here I am uh, checking the entity name and then based on that uh, I am uh, reading the information that is passed on from the uh, OData service to the backend and then creating uh, the OData service. So it's very simple and straightforward to create an OData service. 